who writes. I would definitely Hello, say that there are stories my channel. in everything. As someone uh, not just in the written word or the things we tell each other, but also in objects. Some stories are short and simple. Some are boring, some are long, and some are more elaborate. Today, I'm going to be going through my grandmother's cedar chest. However, what she had in here is no longer in here. Um, instead, I will be going through some of my corsets and costuming items and my mother's belly dance costumes. I'm the Metafictionalist, welcome to my channel. My name's Selena. I do wanna say my mother was always somewhat a dancer and we have dancers in our family. Um, my mom started with ballet and later she took belly dance lessons. Um, it's not part of our culture, we're not Arabic or Egyptian. Um, but she always loved that type of dance and she liked the music so she went for it. I really like that stuff too. I do not dance. I have never had dance training. Um, but I like it. I appreciate it. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy listening to the music too. Um, there's a lot of popular sentiment that argues what is done within the domestic sphere isn't really that important. Like, do the career, that's what's important for women. Um, I've always felt that it was a mistake, a perceptual mistake to take that route when thinking about the internal sphere, what women do within the home and so forth. I know that feminists for a while really were supporting a more positive view of feminine work in the home. The whole line of a mother being a worker was a big thing. Um, and then at a certain point, it seems like everything has been painted as women are oppressed in some way if they're very much in the home. I hope I'm not generalizing too much. I know there's so much variation. Um, I think that what is done in the home is important and that it truly is the job of a lifetime to be a wife and mother um, or mother not everyone's going to be a mother for various reasons um, but something my grandmother did with me and my mom is we would go through this chest <laughs> and look at things my grandmother stored pictures of our relatives one being of a great great aunt of mine who was a dancer and later had a tragic end, um, which I found recently. But uh, what memories were built up and what bonding came of it was incredibly important. And my grandmother not only had pictures, she had stamp collections, coin collections, um, her children's art projects from elementary school. It was a chest full of mementos, really. Stuff that was close to her heart and stuff that carried the family history. Each object in the chest had its own story. Um, and my mother would hang out with us as well and go through the things. Now that I've had it, it's a little bit different. I mean, there are stories for the things I have, but it's also, a place where I can simply store things I treasure. Um, all right, let's do this. Why am I doing this? Um, I used to have parties sometimes. I haven't had a party in ages, but when I had parties, everybody was really curious about what was in the chest. I never opened the chest. I didn't show anyone what was in the chest. People knew it was my corsets and costuming stuff, but um, it was top secret. Actually, it was holding our drinks and the games and so forth. Um, it, it closes, but anyway. I recently purchased this corset. Most of my corsets don't fit anymore because during um, the whole coronavirus thing, I started exercising a lot. Um, but... It's cool to look at these things and remember. So this one's a red brocade corset under bust um, that I got from a company in Czech Republic. I can't remember their names offhand. I think it was Dracula Clothing. 
and I wore it to New Orleans for Halloween one year. I really like it. This is another corset that I had for Halloween one year from Heavy Red. Most of my corsets are from Heavy Red. I didn't purchase any expensive couture handmade corsets um, because I had a budget, but it was from one of their Alice collections, like a deranged Alice Halloween costume. And it has this beautiful dark crimson heart and these faux leather straps. I wore it only once or twice and the zipper broke for some reason, so I've kept it because I think I can either repurpose it or fix it. Um, it does have quite a statement when you walk into a costume party and you just have your heart there shining forth. Um, it's such an unusual piece. This one is my favorite corset, also from Heavy Red. I'm going to fasten everything. Okay. It is an underbust corset gold brocade with that pretty dark crimson Heavy Red is so famous for. Um, this heart is split in half, but I love this one. I wore this to a bunch of different costume parties. It really drew people's attention. Um, I felt like some kind of princess in it. So pretty. And I keep these corsets even though they don't fit right now because again, I believe that I can take them in somehow. This corset has a story. Um, it's from Heavy Red. It's all over the place. I just tried it on for the first time in ages. It actually wasn't my corset at first, but did I steal it? No. I had a friend who wasn't into the same stuff. Like, we liked going hiking, we liked camping, going to the river, hanging out, but we listened to somewhat different music. I like a lot of different music, but she really wasn't into the underground so much. But at a certain point, she wanted a corset, and she purchased her first corset from Heavy Red and she wore it for a while but the truth is is that eventually the um the the boning popped out of the end of the corset and she was super frustrated because back then we were younger and um, not making that much money so every purchase was a sacrifice and she was really frustrated um she ended up giving it to me and it was always too small for me. It wasn't my size. I tried it on and it fits today. It fits and it's never fit before. So um, it's a black satin and there is a beige satin underneath this beautiful lace that looks pretty vintage. So I really like this one. And whenever I take it out of the chest, it reminds me of my old friend. I haven't spoken to her in a long time she moved across the country and I have no idea what happened to her but if you're out there you know who you are and I hope you're doing well um, here's another one this is a lip service corset uh, lip service is a gothic company they are no longer in business I think they transformed into something else um, but back in the day when lip service was still making clothes I got this one and it has boning, but the, the boning isn't very good. Like with some of these corsets, the boning is that plastic boning that's real flimsy, but the corset's so cool. Um, it has like these adjustable straps. I have always been a fan of the bust cups. <laughs> and um, it's black and gray striated lines and the back laces up. This one still fits. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I haven't been going out a lot. But if I go somewhere that it makes sense, I would wear it. Um, yet another basic black corset. The little um, armbands aren't fastened. This was a real popular corset setup. 
in the early 2000s, but also now I still see people going to the old classic um, black satin mixed with black brocade. I haven't worn this one in a really long time because I, I felt like I had so many black corsets and I wanted to change it up. Um, so I'm just gonna move it so you could see the fabric. It's real pretty. Um, heavy red. Their corsets are all right. I, I mean, I really like the fabric they use, although for the adjustable arms, they, they had a setup before where they used to have a little clasp. You could put the end of the band, the armband, on and off, but then um, it would fall off a lot. There's a way to fix that. You could just kind of fasten the metal if you still own heavy red corsets. If anybody else is a fan, you just get some pliers and kind of squeeze down. On the metal part so that it's not as widely opened um, I think this is the last corset in here no it might not be I might have another one in here um, see this is yet another basic black corset this one was supposed to be over the bust but it wasn't I had to be careful and layer it's really just the plainest black satin doesn't have um, any brocade whatsoever. This one came from Victoria's Secrets. So I really uh, liked the construction of it. And when it was laced up, I took the lacing out. When it was laced up, it was very flattering. Like it hugged the figure really nice rather than kind of sticking you in a pattern, so to speak. You felt like it was conforming to the contours of your body. Um, and Victoria's Secrets pretty mass market. And I don't associate them with, um, loving, scrupulous, time-consuming craftsmanship. Uh, they do have some nice corsets and bras. I definitely purchase stuff from them when I have extra money, but um, I was impressed with the corset. I didn't think it would be as good as it was, partially because in the past I had a corset from Frederick's, and that one wasn't really good. I mean, it was really pretty, but um, it just wasn't constructed well. So not everything in here is a racy corset. Um, I have a shawl. In my family, people like wearing shawls. I love shawls, um, especially in the spring. I tend to be pretty warm most of the time and I enjoy cold weather. Um, so I don't like always having a cardigan. A shawl is perfect. These ones are peachy flowers. I'm thinking though that if I get my sewing done or down, I have so much sewing to do. Eventually maybe I can learn how to do those tops made out of shawls. There's uh, someone I follow online who does that and her work's beautiful. Um, this is a beautiful pure silk shawl from Korea. That my grandma gave me she had a friend who was Korean and went and got her this present it's really hard to see it has embroidery on it flowers so <laughs> it's pretty I don't wear this unless I'm doing something fancy because I'm always scared I'm gonna lose it um, this is a vintage handbag I purchased on Poshmark I was going to go to a fabulous party and something happened, I didn't go, but I have it now for my wardrobe because I really like the deep red color. And I was happy with this. I got it for $10, I think, but it's really durable and clean. Can't say how much I appreciate that. Oh, here's something a little racy. I've got this beautiful lip service garter belt. I don't know if it even fits anymore. I have a feeling it's probably too big. Um, and I also suspect that the sequins might be slowly falling off unless I fixed it. But it's so pretty. I loved some of the stuff Lip Service was doing. They're Lip Service obsessed junkies, so to speak. Not literally junkies, but I remember the collectors would buy everything. Um, and I thought that they had good niche lines um, you know, because people are into different things, but I would only purchase 
things every once in a while because again money doesn't grow on trees um then these are like these cool glove things i i don't even think i purchased these i think they came free um with an order from heavy red but i love the fabric so much and the contrast that i won't get rid of them i don't really wear arm warmers or long gloves i would wear long gloves but these are handless like you put you basically put your arm in and then your hand sticks out and i think that they're nice if you go clubbing and you don't want a sweater um and i imagine i will one day wear a costume where i will need them so i don't get rid of them um but sentimental items, I do have some sentimental items in here. So I have this white, it's very soft, it's a sweater shawl. Um, and it was my grandma's, so when, when she passed on, it was given to me. And I'm keeping it here. I mean, I would use it. I don't wear a lot of bright white and cream colors, partly because I'm like a little kid like I get dirty I go hiking I drop things and oh it's like oh I have ink all over me from my pens whatever um but that you know I would wear it mainly I imagine though when I have children later I can go through the chest with them and that's going to be perhaps interesting especially if I can get the old pictures the black and white ones and show them like this is your grandmother's from long ago um, and they might want to use the shawl I also have the nightgown she passed on in um, my aunt gave it to me it's very soft and it's very very small I didn't realize my grandmother was so small um, but yeah I have that uh, I have a snake it's like a snake pillow um my friend was dating this girl for a while that made these and she made a lot of other beautiful things um she came from a family that did a lot of arts um, weaving and so forth i didn't know her very long but i love this so much it was so sweet and i treasure it and i imagine having a baby and giving them the snake to have and play with because it's soft it's just like a pillow Okay, now we're gonna look at my mom's old belly dance costumes. The thing about them is they were stored in the garage for a really long time. And some of them are deteriorating. They're from the late 70s, early 80s. They were handmade, but I took them on hoping my plan was, and I get a little over ambitious sometimes, but I wanted to restore the costumes because I felt like it wouldn't be that hard and I wanted to get into belly dancing and learn how to do it. Um, I, I do have to admit, I tried an online belly dancing type program, <laughs> but at the time I wasn't even doing yoga regularly and as a result of an autoimmune issue. <laughs> I have an overactive immune system, meaning I get really bad allergies that affect my muscles. Um, I found out I was pretty stiff. And when I was trying to do the belly dance videos, it was not easy. Um, and what I decided at that point was I was going to do yoga for a good long while and stretch my muscles out and heal and then try belly dancing out later. Either way, my intention is to restore the costuming. I like doing that stuff. I like working with costumes and sewing. Um, I also am extremely busy, so it's always a matter of one thing at a time. Part of the thing with my mom's costuming is her, her chest, her rib cage is a couple inches, or it was, a couple inches smaller than mine. I remember even as a teenager, I would try to put the belly dance costumes on and I could never clasp it. It's easy to remedy that with extenders, bra extenders, but let's look at this. Um, It 
make so much noise. Um, so this one is a front clasping one, which means it, that doesn't mean it would be more difficult to fix, but it is gold with lots of coins and the beadwork's really pretty. It's iridescent. Um, I think in certain light, it might be easier to see what that looks like. Um, but yeah, and it has some, a couple chains hanging down. Oh, see like the lining isn't too pretty. I have to fix all that, which I don't think would be difficult. Um, I would line everything in nice fa fabric, but yeah, so this is the top of her gold costume because they're by color. And I don't, I don't know if I have every piece. I think a, a few things might've been lost with time, uh, but we'll see as we dig through this chest. Okay, here's another gold one, which is pretty cool. A little tangled. I tried to put this away really nicely, but it's been a long time since I've been through this chest and a lot of stuff has happened in the meantime, so. Okay. Gold with multiple chains. It's coins. And in the center, we have little baubles, like garnet-like crystals and a little gold bell-looking bauble and in the very center, it's kind of hard to see, there's a clip with, it looks like a vintage clip that is sort of wing shaped that is holding on some of the other baubles. This is the belt that goes with that top. And this one has snaps, which I like. Her, her teacher, I believe, was Egyptian. I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure. Um, and her teacher used to make the costumes, I think. So this one doesn't, you know, it's, it's stuff you can pick up at a craft store probably, but we have a large central um, faux jewel, topaz-like, um, the little garnet baubles at the bottom, chains, and you just wear that down on your waist. Here's a silvery one. My mom prefers gold tone stuff. I can wear both, but I prefer silver a lot of times. Because I feel that gold is a really strong color, and I'm more of a... Let me put it this way. I'm a Leo, but I'm a kitten Leo. So sometimes I don't want to be too bold. But um, yeah, this one is a silver bra top not really a bra you wear this when you're dancing and it's a mixture of coins and these diamond shaped coins that apparently have Venus on it <laughs> That's not, that came out weird it has Venus on it it's so hard to see my camera is not focusing properly properly but there's a shell-like um, image behind this lady who's standing like a statue. Um, and we have a little bit of a very pale blue adornment in the center. The coins, there's a lot of coins with three woman figures, which I would imagine are the three graces. And it was paired with this belt, also with coins that feature the three graces. And this one's silvery, but you can see the blue underneath better. Um, okay. Let's arrange this a little bit better. When I was little, I went to belly dance practice with my mom and watched her dance. She was really good. Um, in our house uh, up to a certain point she had a large tapestry on the wall kind of like what I have back here except hers was a belly dancing lady 
this is a black one. I really like this one. This one definitely needs restoration. I think I actually started restoring some of these and had to stop because I didn't have supplies, but um, it is black. As you can see, it needs to be sewn here and there, like some of the threadings coming loose, but it's uh, black with almost like a chain mail type net metal stuff on the lining on the cups. And Oh yeah, the chain for this one is also not in place. But this one was always my favorite because I love black. Um, this one was cool to look at, but it's pink. I do like pale pink, but I'm not a fan of super bright pink. I like it. It's cute. It's like very, it reminds me of the 1960s kind of. Um, this one has lots of dangles and fake faux jewels, <laughs> prismatic faux jewels, and it's velvety on top with um, more of the beadwork. I almost wore my, I have a belly dance hat uh, or a headdress that is kitty like but it was hard to maneuver with it while I was doing this. Um, however, it would go perfectly with the pink costume. This is the belt. So glamorous, even though I don't dance, I really wish I could, if only to wear the costumes. Um, yeah, and then, What's this? This is a shirt I wore when I was little. I like it. It's real soft, so I'm keeping it for my offspring if I have some, which I hope I do. Okay, moving on. I've got to adjust myself. Oh, face in the camera. Hello. Um, veils, lots of veils. We have the black veil, but this one has um, goldish sequins, which makes me think that there was another top with gold sequins that was lost at some point. Um, the a journal of old poetry and such a red veil. Uh, oh, this one, it's, it's like you wear it on your hips and then you put the belt to hide the elastic and it swishes when you dance. So she had a whole set with the pant part, the skirt part, and then the, the veil that you could like swish around <laughs> on top. Purple veil. Also the purple top is missing. This one's nice. It is lined in gold. And so I think for some of these, if the tops and the belts are missing, I can repurpose them into parts of gowns. Um, would I really construct my own gown? Yes. Would it take forever? Yes. Um, would it look perfect? Maybe not. <laughs> um, but it would suffice. I'm one of those DIY people I'm, I'm not as agile and skilled as some, but I make do. I don't even remember this one. This one is, wow, very bright. It's pink, red, and light blue. Celebration colors. And this one has a silver trim. <laughs> I can't even imagine wearing this much color at once. And uh, some pink, the pink pants that go with the uh, very bright multicolored veil, I imagine. Um, oh, now we have some blue stuff. My mom had this cool wizard frock. What? Wizard frock? Well, it was um, kind of like a robe that had silver stars on it and moons, like a wizard. And I always associated it with her blue belly dance costumes. So, um, I'm not much of a blue person, but I can appreciate it. Silver trim. Ooh, 
shimmery. This is a, a very, very um, shimmery, bright skirt situation. And these skirts are meant to be layered, like they'll have slits on the side, so you wear the pants underneath. Um, and I think this one also goes with a, a blue veil with this cool prismatic, it's like adornment. I don't know what it is, it's not beads. It's like a glitter paint or something. The fabric just has it in there. So. Gosh, if I were going to wear something blue, it would probably be something like this. I think. I don't know. It's a lot of blue. Blue is not one of my faves. Um, this is part of the purple costume. It has a lilac purple trim and it is a cream with purple dots. I think it's so pretty. Um, this is more of a veil. <laughs> and more purple stuff the purple this is the purple skirt it has alternating panels of plain mid-tone purple and a mid-tone shimmery purple striped with a coppery gold and it is trimmed with that same coppery gold it's more of a gold but it's a very warm gold Okay, and then let's have like clutter junk in here. Um, green, bright green. <sighs> what can I say? I'm not a fan of bright green either, but if I were making a costume with bright green, I would uh, frame it as the absinthe costume. So these would be the pants. This would be the skirt layer. Whew. Could probably wear it with some of that gold stuff, I guess. And then more absinthe green. This one, though, I was very bad when I was young, and I took my mother's belly dance veils and put them over my window, and they got super sun bleached, so they no longer look the same as they once did. That was my fault. That's also part of the reason I wanted to restore the costuming, because I knew I messed up a few of her veils and such um, because I wanted to bring the magic into my room I had these very boring creamy gauzy curtains that were quaint but not me and so I snuck into my mom's costumes and used them for curtains this is her black veil love the black anyway what else is in here Oh, wow, I didn't even know I had this stuff. That's the wonderful thing if you have time. So let me backtrack, let me connect to this speech. I hope it wasn't too speech-like, but my thoughts about the internal sphere, the domestic sphere, women in the home, um, being wives, being mothers, um, and bonding over things, this activity of going over memories that were tied to other people in the family or to oneself. I've just stumbled upon that in this chest. I had no idea, but apparently I have some of my baby stuff in here, which I didn't even know. Um, like, what is... Th okay, so item one. We have a kitten with a butterfly on a hill, and this is like a pillowcase for a baby's pillow. And it is... Uh, the hand embroidery. I, I don't even remember this. I guess it's mine. It has to be mine since it's here, but um, yeah. I don't know. This is my koala bear that was the stuffed animal I slept with for a long time when I was little. And Snoopy, oh my goodness, a ram. <laughs> <laughs> and the kitty this kitty I think my grandma gave me right before she passed on so I kept it because as an adult I don't keep a lot of stuffed animals but certain ones are special so and uh, I think this was my dress this is a little slip dress <laughs> and it has a bell it's cute I so I'm saying this and I, I'm like I don't know really I can't remember I do remember this bib. 
I remember my great grandmother from Costa Rica would give me cute little things sometimes. And apparently I was a baby, but toddling around. And I remember this one, it's got a little baby chicken on it. It says Costa Rica on it. So um, I remember my great grandmother gave it to me and she got it from Costa Rica and it's, it's a bib, it's cute. Um, I promised the show it was in the chest. What a what a wide variety of things. Everything from corsets to baby items and mother's costumes. The duck pillowcase from when I was little. Another shirt from when I was little. This one, I think I was saving it for when I have a kid, but now that I'm looking at it, there's little holes in the shoulders. But it was very soft and you know, it was one of those shirts when I was real tiny. I wanted to wear it all the time. And, uh, wow. Kind of metal. This sweater, a cardigan I used to wear a lot. I got this from my mom's side of the family. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, it looks like there's random ink blotches on it. I can't remember why that is. So if I'm going to keep it, I should probably try to get the stains out I don't know um, and baby blanket and baby blanket so okay that was what was in the chest I'm even surprised and that's the nice thing about this type of activity or this type of tradition um, you remember things about your past and other people's past and you connect everybody with the memories. I hope this was interesting for you. Um, I know that my grandmother used to always say, oh, I'm giving you these items to put in your hope chest. This was called the hope chest. That term I believe comes from World War II or even before uh, where girls would save things up for when they were to marry in the chest. So they might have china or um, you know, nice jewelry, that kind of thing, and they'd save it up. And the idea was when they moved, they probably wouldn't move with a lot of their stuff from childhood, but they would move with their chest full of the most special things, the heirlooms, the family photos. I never had one of those chests growing up. My parents are very modern, um, so I didn't have one. And my grandma kept saying, put this, put that in your hope chest. I'd accept her presence without a hope chest, but I ended up inheriting the hope chest. So yeah, that's today's video.